casting staff or directors in general, how awkward is it to hire people for unattractive characters as in their whole role is being fat or ugly? I spent a few years in LA going to auditions. Some of the roles I got cast in include overweight jogger, fat guy with beard and guy waiting in line for donuts, which was actually not a specifically fat guy audition more a hipster which was also a lot of the roles I went out for. It wasn't that awkward. And I got to know a lot of dudes who kind of look like me just from seeing them at the same auditions. Most awkward audition was for a Polish tire commercial where I had to be topless. You know, I was thinking about it, and personally I'd be happier getting a role for being fat or ugly than losing a role for not being attractive enough. I've been a professional actor for over 20 years and I can say, not awkward at all. If you have an interesting look and you have signed up for, and showed up for a casting, you know the deal. Ugly actors aren't less smart or self-aware than good looking ones. For example, little people or dwarfs, they get into acting knowing that they will more likely be an elf in a Christmas special than end up like Peter Dinklage, but they want to act regardless. Bottom line. We are all too needy and self-obsessed to feel awkward, even the ugly ones. I read that the actress that played Darlaw's Umbridge was told by friend OMG you would be perfect for that role. And then she read that Umbridge was described as toad like in the books and was like wow, thanks. I've thought about this a lot, especially with kids. The little girl in Desperate Housewives who was the fat kid, evil Angorious character's kid pretty sure that was her storyline. How does a small child grow up with self-esteem when what she is known for is being the fat kid on that TV show? To actually answer the question that nobody has directly, not awkward at all. People will absolutely jump at the chance to be the ugly one. They don't really care. It might be awkward mentally for them, maybe, but it's nothing personal, and they know it, just another job opportunity. Like a classic meme goes, if someone paid you $200, but had to call you ugly would you take it? Of course, I'm ugly. Not stupid. I knew a male actor, haven't seen him in years though, who is always typecast for certain character roles, because of his distinctive looks. He's had a pretty successful career, but when he told me about his work and different roles, I couldn't help but notice that he carried a certain sadness about not being the heroic figure that everybody loves. He had come to terms with his predicament, him becoming an actor was in part a reaction against being an outcast and being bullied, but there was still a longing to be beautiful, loved and admired. I remember watching an episode of Game of Thrones that featured a brothel in one scene and Walder Frey's ugly daughters in another. I wondered what was the harder call to make home for a young actress. Hey mom and dad, I got the part. They said I'd be perfect to play a hideous, completely undesirable woman. Or hey mom and dad, I got the part. They said I'd be perfect to play a naked writhing prostitute. Wore my eye patch to a casting call that was requesting facial deformities slash other injuries. A woman came up to me and asked what was under the patch when I showed her that there was in fact no eye I got to jump ahead in line. Cast as a fucked up solid or extra in a revolutionary war show. Had smallpox one day, lay in the infirmary the next, stuck in the mud another day. Pretty good food and money. Neat experience. All that to say, no one has an iota of shame. Own that shit. There's a model agency in London called Ugly. I imagine everyone involved knows what's involved. More generally, by the time they leave acting school most actors will have figured out whether they are going to be playing Juliet. Fat people know they are fat. They move forward, or not, on that basis. I imagine it is a bit like playing bad guys. You want to tell the stories, so you play the role that the stories demand. In some cases an attractive person will be made ugly by using makeup and or prosthetics. If you have to, you could do the same with an ugly person to save their self-esteem. I remember that, when I was a kid, I was always so offended that I'd always be cast as the ugly slash funny roles. The old lady pirate in Pirates of Penzance. Or the backquote funny sidekick. The one who couldn't sing an A chorus line. But then I became a drama teacher and started casting kids in roles. And I realized, from the pov of the teacher, you only gave the ugly slash funny roles to the genuinely talented kids. The ones you knew could pull it off. 
because it's actually a lot easier to play an attractive slash romantic lead than it is to play a goblin slash she witch slash troll. So now I try to remember that the kid cast as the ugly one is probably gonna be upset that they didn't get the sexy romantic lead with the sweeping ballad, and I try to reassure them that they got the part not because they can't play the romantic lead, but that no one else was good enough to play their part. As a talent rep, most actors are self-aware enough to know their type and how Hollywood perceives them. Weirdly enough it's the pretty ones that have issues, not the character type actors. Most character actors really like being character actors bc they get the fun roles. They enjoy uglifying themselves for auditions. Whenever my roommate, who's older, plump, and average looking, by Hollywood standards, gets an audition that requires someone ugly or fat she enjoys it. She's like awesome. I don't have shower or wear macup today, and I get to let it all hang out. For the most part, character actors really don't take the descriptions personally. Somewhat related. I dated a guy I thought was stunning. Seriously, he was an 8 just getting out of bed in the morning. He was an aspiring actor. Problem was, he was Arabic. Dark skin, nearly black eyes, wavy black hair. He knew he would often get typecast into certain roles, many of which would be unflattering, such as terrorist nutjob. He knew it, but he was excited about it anyway, because he wanted paydays, and he loved acting. I imagine it's similar for people getting cast in conventionally unattractive roles. During middle school, we had to do Mulan, and I played as some guy in the beginning that Mulan was forced to marry. My drama teacher didn't tell me this, but in the script Mulan literally said ooh, I don't want to marry him, he is ugly. As you can imagine, that was a massive blow to my self esteem, especially in manuscript, when there's puberty and hormones acting up. But looking back, I wonder what my drama teacher would say if she saw me right now? Colon close bracket. I can't answer this, but if anyone is looking for an overweight 40 year old male with flyaway hair and a bald spot starting in the back give me a call. I would classify myself more goofy looking than ugly, but as my wife said on our wedding day I will take what I can get. Believe it or not point some people make a nice living off ugly looks I had a friend of many years who played the bad guy on every police and PI drama in the 70s and late 60s, and he was so far removed from the pretty jean pool, it wasn't funny point he did Hawaii 520 like 6 times in 11 years and no one noticed point he told me once at 4s Tucker. F troop, told him, even Hollywood needs its ugly people. I heard they make contracts with fat actors slash actresses. To stay fat like Rebel Wilson apparently they only hired her for the role to be the fat funny friend, but now that she lost weight she can't play those roles. I always thought she looked beautiful fat or skinny, but it's not right to not let a person lose weight just for a movie contract, but then again actors slash actresses are out in weird diets and exercising regimes for movies. This made me think of an interview I once saw with Dustin Hoffman when he played a woman in Tootsie. They put the macup on him and he said, wait, you aren't done, you need to make me beautiful. And the macup artist said, this is as much as we can do. And he started to cry, because for the first time, he felt such pain out there for women and people who weren't attractive and there was nothing they could do about it. I've worked in casting before, really funny to see a room full of people who look remarkably similar. Like a room full of redheads, chubby bald men. Twins, middle class skinny blonde white women, men who look like wizards. These people must see each other all the time. I hope they have their own WhatsApp groups. I'm an actor. Curvy white mustachioed man who would never be hired to sell perfume. But you know what? I have been hired as a model several times. Just because you're dumpling shaped doesn't mean there's not a place for you in the entertainment business. And if you're getting work and getting paid? Fuck em. And honestly the roles I get and go out for are far more interesting usually than they would be if I had an 8 pack and was 6 feet 1 inch inches of square jawed white boy salad. I went to a taping of American Idol. As we're going through the line they're handing people tickets. When I get to the front they give me the tickets from the back of the pack. I noticed, but it didn't register right away. When we got to our seats they were in the back row, even though there was still plenty of seating available in the middle rows. I worked in casting for 10 years. 
overall, it really isn't that awkward or difficult, because the talent pool comes in all shapes and sizes. Talent agencies are a big help, as they'll usually just hit up their niche rosters for the casting call. When we were doing casting calls for print or commercials, often producers would request to see real people which was always the wild west. We'd either put a cattle call request out, or sometimes send an assistant to Hollywood Boulevard to recruit normal people off the street. We got normal, average people to crazes, weirdos and total psychopaths coming into audition. So if we had to audition obese women age 45 to 65 who are amputees for a diabetes medication commercial, we generally had no problem finding these people, and they were more or less chill and easygoing. The thing is, more often than not, everyone wants to be on TV, even if it's a bit roll. The script for Fargo has characters consistently refer to Steve Buscema's character as funny looking. When preparing for the role, Steve asked what type of macupe or prosthetics they had in mind. UMM, no, we are good, Steve. I watch a lot of British TV series and the hash one reason is that they don't look like they were just spit out of the Hollywood industrial complex with hair plugs, cap teeth, bottocks and a spray tan all on a skinny body. The British let it all hang out, and it's a true representation of humans. Ugly, morbidly obese, short, tall, terrible teeth, wrinkles etc. They don't look like Stepford Wives. A comedian in Norway once told a story about requesting props for a shoot for their comedy show where they said they needed a fatty which was roughly translated a common name for the big mat you land on when you pole vault or do other gymnastics. The assistant misunderstood and brought an extremely fat person to the shoot. That's an awkward conversation. I read a comment the last time this was on Reddit about a child actor who was basically there just to be fat, and he said that the director picked a piece of his costume and said it was a special jacket that would make him look fat which is pretty neat. The kid has to be young enough to believe it, but even if they don't, that someone is trying to protect their feelings probably goes a long way. My friend is a director and she gave me a response I think you guys would like to know. She specializes in theater plays. If there is an actor needed for the play that is seen as not conventionally attractive, the crew has an interesting approach. They let the person they are hiring know that the character they will be playing is very unattractive, so they will need to do a lot of macup and stuff to their hair, etc. A conversation would go like this, we need to ruffle your hair and use a bunch of a putting macup that change your face shape. It's gonna be so difficult to make you unattractive, but we will need to use a lot of product. This is not of the same scale, but I directed a play in high school, and I had one kid audition who was perfect for one of the roles, but it was a small role. I told him I thought he did amazing, and when he showed up to the first rehearsal I asked him if he knew who he was yet, because he missed the meeting, where we tell people who they are, and he thought he got the lead. I had to look that kid in the eyes and tell him he did not get the lead, but he got a small role. Hurt my damn soul. What amazes me is the transformation between roles. Someone attractive can become unattractive and vice versa depending on the character they are playing. Makes me think in real life, the change in your hairstyle and general personality can be a game changer. I've always felt bad for the guy who plays Rachel's date and friends, the one phobe gets for her, because she wants Rachel and Ross to get back together. Especially when Rachel says there must be something you like about yourself, he responds I kinda like my hair to which Rachel reacts with really? I mean, ouch. There was a documentary about this on Netflix at one point it was called The Face is Familiar. They interviewed famous character actors like Danny Trejo. He had a quote I knew I made it when my agent showed me an ad that said looking for a Danny Tree Joe type. I said for a few more dollars they could have the real thing. I used to work in casting and one time the office was full of attractive women in their 30s 40s. They were all sitting in silence when one of them said very loudly to the room, why is it that this office only ever calls me in for dead hooker roles? And no one said anything. It was one of the most awkward things I've seen happen in real life. Do they ever do that? I find nerds in entertainment media are always supermodels wearing glasses. I had to stop watching Shit Creek because there's this plain Jane character in it that they casted a beautiful woman for. She is always wearing a full face of perfect macup and the characters in the show will make comments about how she should wear macup. 
I have directed several shows at a small community theater. When we did Willy Wonka I cast a skinny kid as Gloop. We just got him a fat suit. I didn't want to affect any kid's self-confidence. But I probably would just do that with kids. Damn. Finally a post made for me, and it's too late to be noticed. I'm a working stage actor who fits every definition of the word normal. I mean, normal height, normal build, brown hair, brown eyes, soft facial features with a mezzo-soprano voice. You can't get someone more generic than me. However, I've come to be employable as the character actress that isn't fat. It's a rare role in the show, which either classifies myself as being ugly or being a fucking bitch. I wouldn't have it any other way. Those characters are usually so much more fun to play than the pretty ingenue that I think I'd be offended at this point if I was ever cast as a princess. Remember, work is work, and actors will be so happy about actually getting a job that it really doesn't matter how they're looking. I was in this situation while casting the last short film I worked on. The casting call should make these details clear beforehand, so the likelihood of someone showing up to the audition unaware of this very very small. Fortunately the guy we used for our crazy man role was a pro and a good sport about it. Hell. If I could go out and get paid to be ugly, you bet your ass I would do it. Easy money baby. Once I went to play a homeless hippie. Everyone else got shitty clothes to wear, I was the only one didn't need any changes whatsoever. Says a thing or two about my style, but to be honest I can't be bothered to change much. I directed a few shows pre-covered for a local theater in upstate New York, not that awkward tbh. Most theater people are pretty secure with their body types if they're auditioning for that role, and they usually audition for the role they want specifically. We cast a guy as a deadbeat slob in a show, and he thought it was so funny that he got the part and committed to it. This always makes me think of Rosine Barr in the movie She Devil, where she is supposed to be the fat ugly one. I mean, obviously. So they put a massive mole on her face. I can imagine the conversation went something like this. Casting director, we are looking for someone to play the homely overweight wife of the male lead. Actually let's not mince words here. We are looking for someone to play someone fat and ugly. Rosine, okay. And how will you make me ugly? CD, what do you M, O, uh, we will, uh, put a giant mole on your face. We usually say things like looking for someone who can be intentionally awkward, in need of someone who can make people feel uncomfortable on cue. If I wanted someone who was bigger, I would just say all body types accepted. What the intention of the creative team is, and what the consensus of the audience, what their takeaway is isn't always the same thing. People are usually excited at a role regardless of what it is, because there are 7000 actors for every role. I went to school and sixth form college with Gwendolyn Christie, who played Brienne of Tarth. In fact my claim to fame is that she put eyeliner, guilina, I guess, on me in the toilet of a pub in Brighton. It was my mod phase. Anyway although she wasn't and isn't ugly, she was certainly freakishly massive and very unconventional looking. She was more shy at school and I think struggled at little with the why am I so fucking huge thing but still acted. Got a program from 1995 where she played Lady Macbeth in the school play. I think being funny looking is one of the things that allows an actor to stand out. You'd be surprised opus. If there's a casting for druggy looking gangster, fat belly, ugly nose and lazy eyes you can bet the lineup for auditions will go out the door and span three blocks. It's not awkward at all for adults, probably a bit for children, but in the end they're all actors and they understand their looks and will definitely use it to their advantage. When I was a teen I spent a week in summer camp with a few kids from Mexico. There was one girl who was absolutely radiant, probably the most beautiful human being I'd seen in person at that age. She looked like an angel and was very nice as well, although understandably a bit shy. We found out later she was a model and had been in a few films. Not surprising. Her biggest role was the ugly and deformed mutant girl in the original Total Recall movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you have to be that pretty to get cast as a horrible mutant, what kind of chance do we regular people have? I work in film, sitting next to the director all day, every day. 
I've asked this question a few times and the answer is generally the same. If they didn't want to be cast for that role, they wouldn't be actors in the first place. Secondly, there's hundreds of thousands of insecure beautiful people trying to be actors, but these actors show up happy and comfortable with who they are. They have to be, or they wouldn't be able to stand up there in front of the camera and crew, and do this job. This probably could be another reason, why we don't have truly ugly main characters in movies. They are almost always either insanely attractive or somewhat plain. Because you can convince someone starting out, in acting to play a minor role that looks ugly, but you can't convince, or even find established actors, to play the ugly main role. Recently I started watching This Is Us. I can't help but wonder how they approached the actress that plays Kate about who her character was, and the weight specific challenges she faces throughout the show. Chrissy Metz is absolutely phenomenal, though. She really does an incredible job at portraying a very real struggle in a way that isn't pretty or easy. I have such respect for her as an actress. One of the things I also wonder about, Hollywood has cast, sorry, a different light on what we see as normal or good looking. Watch many indie movies or foreign movies and the characters are not ugly, but strike you as not quite up to Hollywood ideals of perfection. I used to be an assistant to a talent agent in commercials, where a lot of character looking actors were sought after. I always felt so uncomfortable sending the sides for these roles, but generally people were happy for work. I think at some point, at least from where I sat at the commercials desk, their dream of being an Academy Award winning actor went away, and in its place, is the dream of making a living off of acting any way they can. They were thrilled to have an audition, even for something horrible like Overweight Ugly Man Hash 2. Casting director here, while I can't speak to how it works in the US, in the UK it isn't awkward at all simply because time restraints don't allow you the luxury of back quote this might hurt someone's feelings. On an average casting call for a project paying industry rates, healthy buy out fees, etc, the applications for even small roles can be in the 1000s. This can mean actors may not even get as long as 5 seconds consideration before being either added to a long list or, more commonly, the back quote no pile. At this stage of the casting process it's all about how you look, so if you look like you could fit the role you're applying for, great, and considering the competition, you'd be lucky to get it. Furthermore, as other people have said in this thread, the actors themselves know what they're getting into as the casting call itself has to be clear and you're not allowed to just spring surprises on people. Not a casting director, but I've selected a ton of models for photo shoots for magazines and ads. Not awkward at all, at least as far as weight goes. We didn't cast many actual ugly models, but plenty of overweight ones. If you're talking to a 250 pound woman who's auditioning for a bra ad shoot, you got a figure they're comfortable with their body size. As a kid, I did acting for TV and movies. My biggest audition ever was at 10 for this new movie called, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I read the book and was like, I'm perfect. So I auditioned, got a call back, and was put on first refusal, so if the kid they offered the role to declined, I would be cast. Needless to say, the kid they offered the role to accepted, and now my biggest claim to fame is being wimpy, but not quite wimpy enough to be the wimpy kid. Back when I was still doing child actor stuff I was almost cast to be a young Melissa McCarthy. My agent generally typecasted me as fat funny character. If you've seen the movie Krampus I auditioned for the role of the mean cousins who I assume died pretty early on. As a kid I really didn't care, because in real life I was the fat funny kid. Now I would be less than enthusiastic to play those roles. I did student directing in college. We usually did a general casting call, so most of the time the actors weren't told which role they were being considered. And in general, if they didn't like the role they were cast as, they could refuse it. It was for credit only, so the stakes were pretty low. It's a general rule in acting. Sometimes you're cast as Juliet, sometimes you're the nurse. What's eating Gilbert Grape? The role of Mama was impressive to me. Darlene Cates who played the character was morbidly obese yet superbly played the role. No matter what her personal issues, she was a very good actress. This is from Wiki. Author and screenwriter Peter Hedges saw a tape of Cates on a 1992 episode of Sally entitled to Heavy to Leave Their House. 
On the show, she discussed her battle with obesity and how it had affected her life. In 1986, pelvic infections caused by her excess weight kept her bedridden for two years, during which she gained an additional 149 pounds. Hedges offered her the role of a morbidly obese mother in the 1993 film What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which she accepted. Television roles followed on the show's picket fences in 1994 and touched by an angel in 1996. She had a small role in the 2001 film Wolf Girl. Producer J. Miles Dale flew a small crew and the film stars from Romania to Texas to shoot their scenes with Cates. I was sent by an agency to audition for the part of a sleazy real estate agent in a shower commercial. Shaved my beard, got in a suit, and greased my hair up real nice. Upon arrival the producer seemed a little confused as to why I had been sent to audition for the part of the estate agent. She then exclaimed that she had back quote ordered an ugly and I would now be auditioning for the part of the clueless boyfriend. Got the job in the end and still not sure how I feel about it to this day. Seeing a lot of jokes and I know a guy so here you go. I'm a first tack on narrative film and television in my entire life I've had this question. Being on set you get to talk to the talent a lot more than you would think. I got close with someone who got casted as a fat guy and asked him. The real answer is a little predictable and disappointing. Yeah they cast for a fat guy, but the posting was as polite as it could be, and I showed up to the audition myself. I knew what I was getting into, and it's like any other audition. In my experience it's not as awkward as you think. Same for like pole dancer and stuff like in Ozark. Obviously they are casting for attractive girls that look a little like trailer trash, and the talent knows it. It's all part of the game. I was an extra on the movie Project X. It was shot at the Warner Brothers lot in Burbank. Same place they have the friends fountain. During a break, a PA went around gathering people. Me among them. I look around and all the people he was gathering were fat. He had us line up at the friends fountain. And one by one he had us lift our shirts and took a polaroid of our man boobs. I guess they had a scene, deleted, where girls were flashing, and the last one was a fat guy. I've lost all the weight, but somewhere in the world is a polo round of me in front of the friend's fountain lifting my shirt. I worked as a casting assistant years ago, and I remember advocating for directors to give characters a name instead of just calling them by their physical attributes. It's really not as much fun calling an agent to tell them their client just landed the role of bug-eyed girl when instead I could tell them their character's name is Sarah. I also worked at an agency and there was a group of actors that always ended up getting submitted for heavy set characters. One of them finally called and said, I'm really not as fat as I think you guys are picturing me. It's an awkward business, and on the one hand as an actor you do have to be honest with yourself about your physical appearance, but at the same time, wouldn't it be nice if the whole industry didn't have to be so cruel about it? Not awkward at all. The best actors know their type and will even play to it in an audition. Oftentimes the ugly character is a perfectly average or even attractive individual who just knows how to accent some unflattering aspects of themselves. Usually the more overt roles like very overweight women are tied to comedies and comedic character actors are thrilled to be able to get laughs. Most comedy is self-deprecating. Not a director, but from Home Alone 1, Kevin's brother was supposed to have an ugly girlfriend. Her face was supposed to be in a picture with Kevin's bro. So they though it would be offensive to call a woman straight up ugly and ended up with putting director's son's face there Mayo. He just wore a wig to look like a girl, and he did, but they gave him a little mac -oop, and he looked like an ugly girl. A big fat F for that guy. I used to work as a reasonably low rent casting agent. The simple fact is that parts are so heavily oversubscribed and actors are so often out of work that, unless you are well known, you take what you can get. Abuse and the loss of dignity are part and parcel of the dream job the other unfortunate outcome of this is that it gives some casting agents slash directors the feeling they can treat auditonies like they are just pieces of meat. I remember for some commercial castings seeing lines of incredibly beautiful women wait outside for hours in the cold often in their underwear only to be rejected and leave in tears. Not to mention the amount of rooms I sat in with other agents laughing and mocking actors audition tapes. People bearing their soul, trying to make their dreams come true, just to get ripped apart behind their back. 
Fuck that. Lasted 6 months. Was a horrible world for the soul.